Okay, so I've got a swing. I got a few swings here up in a file uh, so that we can take a look at. Uh, this first swing I wanted to put in here because of the swings that I've ever caught on film, um, this was just during a BP batting practice at a local field, uh, but with live pitching. And this is probably one of the better swings that I've ever caught of myself on film. Um, so I wanted to start with that because this is kind of a swing where most things went correctly. Uh, so I want to start with that so that way we kind of establish a baseline of what I think goes pretty well in my swing. And then I have a few more after that we're going to take a look at from a game we played not too long ago that have kind of a variety of different things that went on. All were, you know, decent hits, base hits, but they all were different types of pitches and different types of swings and that sort of thing. So I wanted to kind of take a look at that. So to start, let's just take a look at this one. Uh, this one actually I filmed in slow-mo, so it's going to be a lot higher frame rate, so we're going to actually be able to see everything that goes on here. But let's just take a quick look through it, uh, see kind of what happens. So again, nice and slow. I'm taking a big step here. Ball's coming in. And when I meet it pretty much how I always want to meet it, and it goes a pretty far, far distance from what I recall. Um, now, what I want to do now that we've kind of see it, we can actually watch it again just to see. Again, slow-mo, just so you can kind of see what everything's going on sort of in real time. Slow down a little bit so that way you can, uh, you can kind of get it a sense but what I want to do is actually go through it frame by frame here so I'm um, using this new player it's called pot player I've never used it before but it's got a really great and easy to use frame by frame feature you can say here see here so we're gonna be able to look through that uh, so I want to kind of start with a couple of things uh, mainly because they're a little bit weird as far as batting stance I've seen a lot of guys batting stance and mine is pretty strange I think compared to a lot of other players that I see, I think a big, a big, uh, th big things that stand out. I've got a very narrow stance, so you can kind of see. Yeah, my pointer's up here, so you can see. You know, I barely, it, probably not even shoulder width apart. I have a pretty tight stance here. Second thing you'll notice is that I don't really stand with that bat. A lot of guys have that bat straight up in the air. Most people, I would say, have the bat straight up in the air. I actually have it, it's not on my shoulder, but it's it's laying, not completely, but almost flat back. Big reasons I do these things, I learned a lot from, and you should check out the YouTube channel if you haven't before, uh, Ken Van Bogart's his name. Uh, he's an older gentleman, I think he lives in, I wanna say Wisconsin, he's in his 60s now. Uh, but has been doing swing breakdown videos for decades. Um, and he still puts them up with his son on uh, YouTube. So definitely check out their channel. Um, and they call it Swing Makeover. But anyway, I took a lot from, from those videos and I learned a lot from those videos. And some of the biggest things that I took away from those was just if you take out a lot of the extraneous stuff in your swing. So like if you've got a big bat waggle or if you're like, kind of wiggling around up there all that extra movement just it doesn't help you any and the only thing it could possibly do is detract a little bit from what you're trying to accomplish as far as maybe it throws off your timing maybe it does whatever so I've tried to eliminate a lot of that extra movement and a lot of any extra steps that I might have to take um, so again my setup is a little bit different than others but it works for me I think it could work for a lot of people it just isn't quite the norm uh, second thing that I do that I don't actually do purposefully. It just kind of turns out that way, um, which of course I didn't do during baseball when I played then, but during softball, you'll notice I, instead of picking up my foot and stepping out, I actually kind of get this swing. So you'll notice I pick up and I come back, but then it almost like swings out and it stays really close to the ground and I take a pretty big stride there. So it's, it's kind of odd, I guess. But again, it's what I do naturally now, so it's not really anything weird for me. Uh, but anyway, so let's start actually breaking down what, I guess, what's important about this swing and why when I look at this, I think about most things went correctly when I look at this swing. So again, I'm kind of in my neutral stance here. Ball is pitched. Um, I bring that knee back. So 
you'll notice if I can get it kind of the peak of where it's back there. So maybe right there. So you notice I get a little bit of hip turn backwards and I bring that front leg back to the back leg again, almost touching. Um, but what that allows me to do is load up on my back leg. So obviously my front foot's off the ground right now. So there's no way there's any weight on it. I fully load up on my back leg and let me pull this up. I apologize. My face is going to turn slightly green here because I've got a green screen, but you'll notice the important part here. Make sure I have my thing set up. Okay. So you'll notice here, if I were to draw a straight line, basically from the top of my head, so if I draw a straight line from the top of my head down through my foot, this is a very not straight line, by the way. I'm not very good uh, drawing straight lines with the mouse. But you get the idea. Basically, all of my weight is kind of stacked straight up and down uh, this leg. So my head obviously is right in the middle, directly over the middle of my shoulders, which is over where all the weight is shifted on my hip, which is all right in the middle of my foot. So again, really important at this point right here, again, I'm shifting a little bit back, but essentially if I wanted to, I could probably pick one foot up and I could stay balanced right in this position with everything stacked straight up and down. So kind of an important thing there. Again, you wanna make sure you're on balance. If you're losing your balance during your swing, chances are you're leaking some power or some efficiency or even some accuracy somewhere. So balance is super important. So let's take that line away. Now, as we move forward here, uh, another critical point in the swing that whenever I'm talking to someone or teaching someone about swings, um, very, very important thing is to create that bat lag. So the bat stays back initially while your body's going forward. So let's watch as I step, I'm going to take a big, big, big log stride. So let's wait. Let's get to where I kind of put all my weight on the front foot. Maybe like right there or so. So you'll notice now my foot is fully on the ground. Pretty much all my weight has shifted that way. And you'll notice my back foot is actually, you can't really see it, but you can kind of glean that my uh, my my heel is coming up and my toe is actually about to come up as well. So again, I'm getting all that weight or as much of the weight as I can shifted to that front leg. And if we take a look at that, two important things to point out here. So let's look at, oh shoot. Wow, that was real bad. So the distance here, that's pretty far. That's a good rule of thumb when you're out practicing this and you're trying to figure out where your stride is. A bat so I don't think I've ever seen maybe they're out there a slow pitch softball bat that is not 34 inches they're pretty much all 34 inches so what I like to do is I will lay a bat down if I'm trying to figure out my stride distance I will lay a bat down and as long as you are striding the length of a bat or maybe slightly more depending on how tall how long your legs are you're probably getting uh, that's about the appropriate amount of a stride now if you're a little bit shorter you might be a little under that but we're talking about an inch or two difference. So there's a lot of people I see that are trying to create more power out of their swing that take this short, you know, they pick up their front foot and they move it maybe one foot forward. So a lot harder to get all that momentum moving if you're not taking this big stride. Now that is to say you don't have to have, you don't have to start as, as close as I am because I start my feet really close together. But you want to make sure that your weight travels forward pretty far because that weight traveling forward is what's going to get a lot of your body momentum into the swing. So let me actually get rid of this. So again, thing to remember, remember your stride. It needs to be long. Next thing that I like to point out here is that when I'm in this position, when this front foot lands, my momentum is going forward. So I'm not just picking up a foot and setting it down. What I'm actually doing is this front foot is actually stopping me from all my, my weight going this direction. So I'm moving this way, right? This is where my body's going. And all this foot's doing here is actually keeping my body from flying forward. So What's really important is here, this is a brace leg. So you are bracing against that. You're not just picking it up and setting it down, which 
again, I think I see a lot of uh, players that maybe aren't swinging to their, they're not swinging to their power potential. And again, I should caveat, when I say power, I'm not talking about home run hitting, and I'm not talking about that. What I'm just talking about is getting the maximum amount of velocity on a hit of the ball that you for whatever you're trying to accomplish. So let's say you're just trying to get a base hit. You just want to hit it between the third baseman and the shortstop, and you want to hit a grounder. Great. It's a lot better if that grounder is going at 90 miles per hour off the bat than it is 65 miles an hour off the bat. So that's what I'm talking about when I say power here. I'm just saying creating more exit velocity off the bat, whether or not that means the ball is going over the fence or it's a line drive in front of the outfielders or it's a grounder through the hole, whatever it is, you're always better if you can hit that spot with more velocity. It's always going to be better. So that's what I mean when I say when I'm, when I'm talking about power. Again, not specifically, okay, we're trying to hit a ball out of the park. We're just trying to hit a ball hard. So again, front foot, brace foot. That's just holding you back. So let's get rid of these. My terrible arrow I made there. And let's move a little bit forward. So now, another important to, thing to note here is when my foot is now, as we've established, my foot is now, weight is all down on that foot. So my momentum is shifted almost all the way forward. Really important thing to note here is where the bat is. So that is where the heel or the, the knob of my bat is. That is where the head of the bat is. You'll notice still way, way back. I have barely started to move them forward. As a matter of fact, I've probably moved them back. Like if we go back through this a little bit here, let's, so you'll notice if where I'm starting here, watch my hands as I'm striding forward. Those hands are actually moving back and away from me. So they're moving, again, they're moving backwards. They're moving away from the center of my body at first. So basically another step of loading there. And then maybe right there, uh, maybe there-ish is when it starts to come forward. Now you notice my foot is not fully planted yet. So if there was something that I could critique there, if I could get my timing a little better, I would rather not get those hands started until my foot was fully planted. Now, again, this is a pretty small detail at this point. I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, little picks at this this isn't like a this isn't a super super big flaw here but it's definitely something that i think could improve a bit but again not the end of the world still was a pretty good swing so let's get back to where the foot got planted so maybe there ish right around there all right so those hands are back they're lagged so again not perfect but pretty good overall as far as where it stayed, where where my, my hands are. Now, we're going to watch, now that that front foot is braced, we are going to come through that ball. So I'm going to kind of go frame by frame here so you can see. Notice my front arm is got a little bit of a flexion, but pretty straight. And that back arm is, is pretty much bent under. And you'll notice I have that overhand, underhand grip on the ball. If you look at my front hand, it is basically palm is facing the ground, backhand, palm is facing the sky. So pretty important there too. And you're gonna notice I have a pretty flat bat path. So my bat right there, if you kind of look at the position, it is gonna come straight through, back and forth here, basically almost creating a straight line. Now, slightly upward again, that's one thing I need to fix. I need to have more of a flat plane. Well, not a flat plane, but a more straight out as opposed to an up. Sometimes I elevate the ball when I don't intend to. So something I could fix, but not too bad here. And then let's find right here, point of impact. <laughs> this little uh, halo you're seeing there is not like me breaking the sound barrier. It's it's actually the ball was kind of dirty that day because the uh, the grass was wet. So it kind of had some dirt stuck to it. So the uh, that's just dirt flying off. I'm not creating sonic booms or anything. Um, anyway, so right here at the point of impact, again, notice that front foot really hasn't gone anywhere. It has been planted and it is holding me back. Now you can see, let's take these off. So you can see again, 
my momentum is moving me in this direction, right? So I am going forward. This foot is holding me back. Now, another important thing, though, that we talked about balance uh, sort of towards the beginning here. So let's take that arrow away. So when I get to this position, if we were to draw a line again through my head, straight down through my knee, I'm pretty much straight up and down balanced right here. Again, my back foot is actually elevated off the ground a little bit. If you look really close, you can see that there's actually a space between where my foot and the shadow meet. I'm holding myself back here. This foot is off the ground, but because I'm holding my back, uh, myself back so hard, I'm able to keep that balance straight up and down as I rotate through. And you'll notice if I go through this too, if I go back a little bit, you'll notice now I'm moving forward a little bit, but once I kind of get through that swing, if you look at the middle of my head and most of my torso and hips, there's not really a whole lot of movement forward and back through space. So once I get my hips turned towards the pitcher about there ish, You'll notice my head, my chest, everything stays pretty much in the same spot. And if you look at my front foot, my front leg isn't even hardly moving. It's barely twisting on its axis there. But that front leg is just stuck in, in place while the rest of my body is using the momentum I created to come through. Almost like if you just had, if I was on a skewer <laughs> and you just took that line straight through the middle of my head through my knee, I'm not really moving too much, getting right through it, creating power uh, because I'm balanced and because I'm holding myself back there. A couple other things too. I've gotten much, I've gotten really good at this. I, I really had some issues with it when I first started, but notice how still my head is too. I'm watching that ball. My head is not flailing around. It's not doing anything crazy. It's basically got right on the ball the whole time that's just helping you hit a ball accurately. So I think with that, you're able to see a lot of the things that I'm doing right. Again, I've got others where I'm not doing everything <laughs> right, but I wanted to start this one as a baseline. And let's just kind of take a look back through it one more time, just to, just to kind of reiterate all the points. So again, I've got a funny stance. Stance is really up to you, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But when I look at mine here, and I'm evaluating myself, I look, I'm balanced. So right over the middle, I'm balanced. My head through my hips, point between my feet. Uh, my bat is in a comfortable position. My hands are, are comfortable. When that ball starts coming, I get that leg and, tor or leg and hips twist back. I keep my hands moving backwards. I take my big stride step, again, at least the length of a bat for that stride. Now, once I land, my hands can fly forward in a flat position. Hands can fly forward, strike the ball, hopefully just under or right on the center of the ball and either elevating it if that's what you're trying to do or pushing it straight through whatever hole you're trying to do there. So that's kind of my breakdown of my own swing if I were to do that. And this would be, again, a swing where everything went right. Thank you for watching, everyone. We really appreciate it. Depending on what platform you're watching us on, like, subscribe, leave us a comment. Anything you can do to let us know that you like what we're doing here, we really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.